The NFL Draft first round is in the books, and it only took us three picks to get our first major surprise of this year's draft and one of the biggest surprises that we've seen in recent memory. Trey Lance, the one-year starter out of North Dakota State. Quarterback goes number three overall to the San Francisco 49ers. This particular pick has been uh, questioned, I guess, to put it mildly. Well, to ha- to answer all those questions, hopefully, is a guy who's been covering Trey Lance and knows more about Trey Lance than you or I or almost anyone else in the country. It's Nick Cousins, sports director of KVRR-TV up in uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Nick, you've been covering Trey Lance. Uh, you've seen how he's developed. Just your 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 first reaction to seeing him go so high. Was this expected? And, and how are people around you in the Fargo area reacting to this? Well, the Far- everybody in Fargo is going crazy because – NDSU is now the only program to have from FCS to have you know two quarterbacks drafted. You had Wentz go two, and now Lance go three. So that's two quarterbacks that have now gone top three, and that's three quarterbacks in a row now for NDSU that have got drafted. So people are calling it quarterback U now. Um, but <laughs> as far as as far as Trey Lance goes, I, I I expected him to go in the top ten. I just didn't expect him to go number three. Um, and going into this whole process, when he first declared back in October. Uh, he was it was lucky he wasn't going the first round and not the top ten and just teams just fell in love with him over the evaluation process. He didn't play. There was only one game that NDSU played in 2020 because of because of COVID um, mm-hmm. that he played in um, back in October against Central Arkansas and that was the that was the first time that he that he threw an interception. He he, he went without his whole 2019 season without throwing an interception and that game against Central Arkansas was pretty much the showcase game for all the teams and scouts to come and watch him play uh, against some competition. And ever since then, he was working out uh, in Florida and uh, uh, Georgia and California with a couple different quarterbacks, coaches, and he had two pro days. The first pro day had about 30 teams. And then the second pro day had four. And one of those teams that was at the second pro day was the 49ers. And that's where they really fell in love with him. Uh, head coach Kyle Shanahan, um, he actually set Lance up um, two weeks before the second pro day with one of his former players that he coached, who is now a quarterbacks coach as well, and set him up with set up Lance with certain drills to run, and then he wanted to see how Lance would perform in those drills at the second pro day. So you can tell how much they how much interest there was already going going in there. So this was definitely a, a situation where the 49ers they fell in love with the player, and credit to them. You know, they were going to pick the player here, even though I think anyone could have guessed that coming into this, picking Trey Lance number three would have garnered a lot of criticism. But, you know, from from what you're saying, the 49ers just they they loved him as a player and were willing to use a pick this high on a guy that they felt would would fit what they were trying to do. There's a lot of upside. I mean, he still has even with the inexperience. I mean, there's still a lot of development you can have with him. And I think that's where. That's where the the upside is, is, you know, you can come in. You still have Jimmy Garoppolo, who got the 49ers to a Super Bowl just two years ago. And it, and if he stays healthy, that's a good mentor uh, for Lance to have. And if he, if he doesn't get healthy, then you can, you know, you can use uh, Lance in many different ways. And I think that's mm-hmm. kind of what st- stuck out to them uh, is that, you know, there's so much so much room to grow with him uh, at the quarterback position and what he can do both in the in the pass and the run game i mean he threw for 2800 yards but also rushed for 1100 yards so there's a lot that you can do with him and there's a lot of similarities to what ndsu runs they run that pro style offense and it's the same pretty much the same system that kyle shanahan runs as well yeah let's talk about trey lance as a player for a minute because this is a guy who put together one of the best seasons that we've seen in the fcs maybe ever at least the best that that i can call at the top of my head now i'm not an fcs expert but certainly uh what what he put together as you said uh about four thousand total yards uh i think he had something uh let me let me look it up real fast he had 30 touchdowns and i don't believe any turnovers he threw 307 consecutive passes without an interception so i mean this is it's not like this is coming out of nowhere if you're just taking this one season it doesn't seem like the 49ers are reaching. Certainly, if any FC or FBS player rather had this kind of season, uh, they would be. I mean, they'd be the number one overall pick, probably, no question. 
even with only one season under their belt. But Trey Lance does only have that one season that he's played. So you figure that that has to be a concern as well, that not only is he coming from the FCS, but we have very little to go on, even if his one season is one of the best that we've ever seen. Yeah, I think, I mean, those numbers would be crazy even even for a high school player to, to put up. But uh, I think the, the more the more of the concern is not really the fact that he's played 17 games, but the fact that he's just played one competitive game uh, in, in 2020 and he's going to go into next fall and he's not even going to have one whole competitive game in a calendar year. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think I mean, that's really the big concern uh, as far as Lance goes. But I mean, the, the guy, the, the guy trains hard. He, you know, he, he works hard and he's, he's been, and you know, and he's a humble guy and people, you know, people fall in love with him. I think that's another part of why the 49ers just, you know, wanted to draft him. Cause they said, as soon as they talked to him, they even got his parents involved uh, in the conversation when they were talking to him originally. It's just, and he, and he was a red shirt. He came in as a red shirt and he was backing up Easton stick. Who's also in the NFL with the Los Angeles chargers. And, he really just, you know, took that and he was he was breaking down offenses. He spent a whole year just, you know, learning offenses, breaking down offenses, watching film. And I think that's why he ended up becoming so good. So I think even with the, just the one game in the in the calendar year and he's not, he doesn't have a lot of live competition uh, going into his first NFL season, I think you can bank off the fact that you know he's going to get into the film room, he's going to study, he's going to be committed, he's going to be a sponge. And he's going to learn. I think that's kind of another another reason why is because you you get you get the player on the field, and you get an, like an incredible mind off the field as well. So this kind of seems to me the way that you describe it as someone who has talked to him and gotten to know him a little bit that this would be a pick that was really won over in the interview room. And again, the Niners ultimately, when you're talking about a quarterback, this is not only is he supposed to be the best player in terms of on-field results, but he's got to be the leader of your team as well. You know, he's got to be a leader of men, and that obviously we know that's such an important job for a quarterback. So in that particular aspect, in the intangibles aspect, how do you feel like Trey Lance projects to the next level? Uh, I think he'll do just fine. I mean, you look at at NDSU and how dominant they are. I mean, when he put up those numbers, he was a 19-year-old, and he was running an offense by uh, pretty much, you know, he was leader of that offense at 19 years old. Didn't lose a game, 16 and 0, led them to a a championship in, in his in the one year he was as a starter, along with a first year head coach as well that season. So I think you know that that kind of any any concerned question they have about him being a leader, I think that proves it right there. Just the fact that he came right in, he had success, put up all those numbers. And and led a led an offense and didn't lose a game right to a championship and it's like it's kind of just picked up where he left off from his successor Easton Stick mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier who all he's the all-time leader in uh, FCS yards total passing yards rushing yards all that together so I think you know he had big shoes to fill coming in uh, replacing Carson Wentz who's was the highest pick ever in the FCS to Easton Stick who's the all-time leader in yards in the FCS to him and he answered all the calls you know going undefeated and and then winning a championship in the one season. Well, there is, of course, one last call to answer, and that is these last two guys that you mentioned were both drafted. Easton Stick now is uh, backing up Justin Herbert over in uh, uh, L.A. with the Chargers. And, of course, you know, everything that's gone down with Carson Wentz, and, and we've seen his career develop going from this really promising player uh, playing for what ended up being a Super Bowl winner and then, of course, getting hurt before that playoff run to now basically being run out of Philadelphia and a lot of questions about, you know, how good was he in that one year? So that, I think, plays a big role into why people really are questioning where Trey Lance uh, may fit when it's all said and done with all these uh, quarterbacks, five of them that were taken in the top 15. So Carson Wentz, he had this long record that he had amassed at North Dakota State. He played multiple years. Uh, To that point, he was North Dakota State's record holder in in almost every stat for a quarterback that you can imagine. So you had a ton of film to go off of and a long career for Carson Wentz. Uh, But Trey Lance, you don't have that. You've got one full season of him, as we talked about. And and, uh, I I believe you said that this is the fewest snaps played by a quarterback drafted, I think, ever. Um, So you kind of have the opposite. However, it does seem like Trey Lance 
shows a little bit more polish in terms of his thrown ball than Carson Wentz does. Wentz was the North Dakota State, I think, third all-time before Easton Stick got there in uh, in career interceptions. As we mentioned, Trey Lance threw 307 consecutive passes without a pick. So when you have Carson Wentz as the measuring stick, which he is going to be, how does Trey Lance compare going into the NFL? I think with Carson, the, the big the big reason why I think Carson Wentz struggled uh, over over this last year was the the system fit. Uh, I, I see him go to the Colts now. He's reunited with his old offensive coordinator Frank Reich. Was that was the the two years that were his best years the the 2015 year, which was the year where he almost won MVP before he got hurt the last three three games and then he was out for the year and then 2016 when the Eagles were in the Super Bowl and he also got hurt that year too, but statistically he put up his best years. So I think with Wentz, it's more of the system he fits in. Um, but with Lance, I think uh, like you like you were saying, uh, you know, it's more of, I think he can kind of fit into any system, especially if he's going to come in and he's not going to start right away and someone's going to ask him to, you know, learn behind a veteran quarterback, he's going to take the time to really, you know, grasp what's what's in front of him and, and really get in and, and, and learn and be a sponge of what what it is that he's going to have to take on. Is there a particular kind of system that Trey Lance would work well in? I mean obviously he was uh, he was such he was so good on his feet in college and I misspoke earlier by the way he had 42 total touchdowns um, and 14 of those came on the ground. So does he need a system that's going to allow him to do that more of uh, kind of the RPO that we've seen make its way into the NFL more and more? Or do you feel like he can adapt to more of a, I guess you would say Kyle Shanahan-esque system where he's going to ask his quarterback to make quicker reads, uh, shorter to intermediate routes, the kind of things that we've seen Kyle Shanahan do? Uh, I think he can, I mean, I don't think it matters what system he goes into. I mean, he ran he ran a pro-style system at NDSU where you know he's got he's got all the all the plays on the wrist like all the NFL quarterbacks do. So he's constantly checking in and out of out of the plays. And mm-hmm. some you know sometimes I mean he's he has it in his ear and he's checking the play at the line of scrimmage and changing it up if he needs to, just like an NFL quarterback. So I think that it works out fine. And then also I mean just in his and he's he's learned the hard work uh, the hard work ethic from his from his dad. His dad Carlton was actually an NFL NFL player. Uh, he played two years in the NFL and then was in the Canadian Football League for a couple years after that. So I think, you know, just having it in his family and then, you know, building it up to this moment where he, you know, he's he's succeeding at at whatever he is accomplishing, I think that also helps as well. But like you said, I think any system that works out well just because of the fact that NDSU prepares their quarterbacks uh, with a pro-style system uh, and, you know, Randy Hedberg, who's the quarterback's coach, I mean, he, he's – you know, you see what he's produced with the last two quarterbacks that came out of NDSU, and you just you can't really you can't really have a lot of questions there. Yeah, that's true. You definitely can't argue with the results, just in terms of uh, producing quarterbacks that go on to the NFL. Uh, I want to talk generally here. Obviously, as I mentioned at the top of the video, and I mean you can look this up right now. There, basically every sports site in existence is questioning this this pick saying i don't know about trey lance saying well justin fields was still there mac jones was still there you know kind of naming these these quarterbacks uh cbs i believe gave it a c minus grade for drafting trey lance and just a quick glance through other grades that they gave uh they didn't give any other quarterback uh taken below a b grade so cbs didn't like this pick leach report didn't like this pick it seems that generally there is kind of a stigma about fcs quarterbacks um and you know you could you could argue that that's legitimate especially you know considering what we've seen the last three years for carson wentz and this it is a very you know what have you done lately for me kind of league but for you living in fargo which you know you're from chicago you grew up in an nfl town with a famous nfl team so now going to fargo where this is the big draw this fcs football school is the big draw. Uh, what are people's reactions generally to this idea that you know, if you come from NDSU, if you come from the FCS, you're not going to be able to perform at the level that we see from someone who might come from the FBS? Well, that's an interesting question because uh, that that was asked to uh, NDSU's head coach uh, Matt Entz the other day uh, at his press conference, and he said, you know, that's the biggest question that he gets from 
from NFL scouts and executives that call him about players from NDSU is, why should I draft him? He's from the FCS. And his answer is is, uh, is easy. I mean, you, it's, a, it's who you go up against in practice. Uh, you look at you look at last year, uh, NDSU has a defensive end who's actually uh, on the Broncos, Derek Tuska. He was drafted uh, by the Broncos last year, so he was in the league. And then you look at, you know, who was on the offensive line um, with him last year. You have another offensive lineman who's going to get drafted today probably for NDSU, Dylan Radins. He's protecting. Uh, he was protected Trey Lance all of last year, mm-hmm. uh, and then another another a former NDSU player who was a grad transfer who went to LSU this year, Jabril Cox, who's a linebacker. He's going to be going up the board today as well in the second round. He was going up against Trey Lance in practice, and then there was another cornerback, Marquise Bridges. He had some looks in NFL last year. He was on the 49ers practice squad, and right now he's a free agent. And then you go and you look at. NDSU had the top safety in FCS two years ago. He's going up against Trey Lance, so you have the best. I mean, you have the best players uh, in the FCS going up against the best competition in, in practice, and so that, that I mean, that's how Ents answers it. Is you know, look who look who he's going up against in practice, and not only are they the best players in the FCS on that level, but they're getting drafted into the league as well. So he's going up against other pro competition. So one might argue that Trey Lance, he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, not only for himself, not only for this historic franchise in the 49ers, which, you know, not three decades ago were the most dominant team in the NFL. Uh, So not only is he holding all of that pressure on his shoulders, but really I feel like in a lot of ways, he's kind of carrying water for the entire FCS because Carson Wentz was the biggest name FCS player that we'd ever seen to that point. And, you know, I hate to keep talking about what happened with him, but that is the name that everyone knows when you talk about North Dakota State, when you talk about FCS. So now it's Trey Lance. Uh, It feels like he's got a lot of pressure on him to perform, to show that FCS players do project well to the NFL. They can perform. So is he the kind of guy, it sounds like he might be, that can deal with that pressure, not only of his team, but also of really an entire division of football on his shoulders? I definitely think so. I mean, just be, not even because of the pressure he had coming in, replacing the two quarterbacks before him at NDSU, but just what he said to go through through this whole draft process. I mean, he doesn't get a, a full season like the Justin Fields, the the Trevor Lawrences, the Zach Wilsons um, to really even boost his. I mean, he goes number three, but he doesn't get that opportunity to boost that that stock even more or get more looks like those other quarterbacks that went. In the in the in the top 15 picks, like you can throw Mac Jones in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just having to deal with that and you know declaring for the draft um, back in October after just the one game he played in the fall and literally being just trained this whole time, not playing any live games. I think you know just I think him betting on himself and believing in himself that you know this this was the right decision for him to make and not play the spring season. Uh, that the FCS is currently in right now yeah. and and betting on himself to, you know, trust the 17 games he played, uh, even though it's such a small sample size, I think just going through that whole process and then literally just training for a whole year uh, to get to this point. I think I think that's enough belief, enough belief right there that, mm-hmm. you know, I think any pressure moments ready for him. And the fact that I think it's a little bit different situation as well. I mean, you look at Wentz, they drafted the Eagles trapped him to be the franchise QB right away. The 49ers, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Shannon said, you know, Garoppolo is still their number one guy. So Trey Lance isn't stepping into a situation where he has to be the franchise quarterback right away. You can take your time with him. Do you think that's realistic that Trey Lance will be able to sit? I mean, I, I foresee a situation where, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo comes out and struggles and then suddenly people are asking, hey, you traded up and you got this guy at number three, San Francisco. Where is this guy? Can he play now? Uh, you know, what, at what point is uh, are those calls going to start to be made by the fans? And it, would San Francisco listen? I, I think so. I mean, you look at, I mean, Lance is used to sitting. I mean, he 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 redshirted for a whole year, uh, and there was that new redshirt rule when he was beh- uh, when he was a redshirt freshman, where he, he only played played four games, and uh, he played two he played two games that year. But if you stand under four, you can still redshirt. Uh, and, he, and he played in that in that first game he played. He played one snap, 
and he ran for an 80 yard touchdown uh, in a, in a non conference FCS game. So I, and he, so I mean he's used to sitting, but when but when but when it's time to get in the game and answer the call, he, I mean he's proven over and over again that he's ready for it. And the more the more that he you know he he can sit, like I said, he sat the whole year behind Easton Stick, and then he turned into what he was in 2019. So I think you know any any time that the moment is called for him, he can be ready even if it's, you know, being cold off the bench or sitting for a couple games or whatever the situation may be. And that might be a big reason why the 49ers felt like they wanted to go with him. I mean, it's one thing to take a quarterback that you feel like could be the starter in three years if he's if he, you know, is able to sit and learn. It's another thing to take a guy who needs to be ready if his number is called. And it sounds like uh, Trey Lance has that experience and has that ability now, we talked about a lot of the challenges that, that he'll face going into this uh, San Francisco program, but one of the advantages that I think a lot of people who are not from the Fargo area really don't have an appreciation for is how rabid the fan base is and how passionate they are and how you and I have talked about this before. Their NFL team almost becomes wherever their guys are. So, you know, you and I have talked about how Carson Wentz you know, made all of North Dakota Eagles fans, right, for, for a few years. So if I'm correct in saying, I think a lot of North Dakota fans are going to be buying San Francisco jerseys in the next couple days, and that could be a big advantage for Trey Lance. He has this base of support that that really believe in him. No doubt. Uh, to put that in perspective even more, I mean, literally our Sunday sportscast is lead with the Vikings because that's the, that's the main NFL team, and then whatever team Wentz was playing for, so that would have been the Eagles. <laughs> And so that's early our Sunday sportscast. I guess now you're gonna have to add Lance to that mix when he gets in, when he gets his uh, opportunity with the 49ers to play in a game. Um, but I do think that uh, the Wentz is a little more, uh, a little more of a hype uh, in the area just because he's from the state of North Dakota. Uh, he is, he's from, the, he's from the capital city, uh, Bismarck, and he, you know, and then he went to the state school, NDSU. Trey Lance, he, he's from, he's from Minnesota, southern, southwest Minnesota. And he came here and, you know, he only had the one year. People did fall in love with him. And he's always going to be remembered because he had that perfect season, put up those numbers and won the championships. And people still love him, obviously. But I think, you know, Wentz will still be number one because of the fact that he's from the state and he was here a little bit longer and went to the went to the state school and, you know, really built up, you know, that connection with people uh, for a longer period of time than Lance. But I, certainly both will be loved. And obviously, people will still follow both. There's no question about that. But I do think that you know the, the hype for Wentz is a little more just because of the fact that he's he's the homegrown talent. That makes sense to me. I hate to I hate to put you on the spot a little bit here, but I will. Uh, if you had John Lynch's pick here, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, if you were picking a number three, Trey Lance is on that board. You've got Justin Fields. You've got Mac Jones sitting there as well. Uh, and you also have Jimmy Garoppolo, so it's you may not even necessarily need a quarterback. Would you have made this decision? I think with Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster, yes. And also the fact that being a Bears fan, we got Justin Fields, so that's cool uh, <laughs> because of it. But I think, you know, you look at the other teams like you mentioned, um, if I was, if there was other teams, um, unless I look at other teams that had top 10 picks, um, you know, the... The Falcons ended up not drafting a quarterback, but that would have been another good team for Lance to go to because of Matt Ryan. The 49ers having Jimmy Garoppolo. I even think the Patriots would have been a good fit because Cam Newton's already there. I think it's more of a situation, uh, situational fit uh, for Lance. You know, I think the best situation would be to go to a team where there's a veteran quarterback, kind of like that Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith situation uh, with the Chiefs where, you know, Mahomes sits behind Alex Smith for a year and then Alex Smith moves on, the Chiefs move on from him, and then the rest is history. They're in, they're in two Super Bowls and win one. Um, so I think it was more, I think it's a fact that Lance needed to go to a team that already had an established quarterback, where if he goes to a team that doesn't have a veteran quarterback and he has to be that guy, I think that that might not have been the best situation for him because uh, like we were talking about pressure earlier and yes he can answer that call and be that pressure but to come in right away with those expectations I think that would have been a little bit of a struggle kind of like a, a Dwayne Haskins situation with uh, Washington that makes sense so the Jets pass up on him obviously the Jets at number two take Zach Wilson out of BYU and that would have been a situation where Trey Lance would have had to come in and be the guy and there there is no veteran really to 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 learn behind um 
so you mentioned uh, you mentioned the Bears, and you know as we're wrapping up here, I've mentioned several times that you know you're from the Chicago area, grew up a Bears fan. Uh, so the Bears end up with Justin Fields, who was one of the guys obviously in the mix for uh, this number three pick by the 49ers. He ended up sliding all the way down to 11. Uh, CBS and basically everyone really loves this pick. A lot of people believe that Justin Fields was at least the third, if not the second best quarterback in the draft. Uh, so for you as a Bears fan, uh, how do you feel about this? Was, this? was this a good pick here for you boys? I think it was a, definitely a good pick for for them. Uh, you look at Mitch, Mitch Trubisky experience that did not work out very well. Um, and Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, the GM and the coach, they they really had this was like this is like their last this was their last chance. Like the Bears shouldn't even give them this chance in the first place, but the management gave them this one last chance to come, and it, it was a risk worth taking because, like you said, he had he uh, Fields was you know the second third best QB, and you get him at number eleven by trading up at you know that could be a steal in this draft. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not big on Andy Dalton, but you don't, I mean, even with Andy Dalton, he was, he's been an established QB in the NFL. He's, he's, he's taken the Bengals to the playoffs a couple times. So even if you don't want to start fields right away, you can put Dalton in there and then see what happens. So I think it's a good, it's a good situation. It had to be done because obviously, you know, we, we can't draft quarterbacks in Chicago. That's just not something that, that, that happens. Uh, since Jim McMahon, there hasn't been a good quarterback. There's been, I think, like 30 since I've even been born in my 25 years. There's been 30 starting quarterbacks. So any 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 young promising quarterback that doesn't have that one in that one year wonder type feel to it, like Trubisky did, where you had a really small sample size, just 13 games. Justin Fields started for two years. He went to a championship. He went to a he went to two college football playoffs. So I think you know it, it's it's the right choice. All right, my final question for you here. If we come back in five years and, and we do a video ranking all the quarterbacks, the five quarterbacks from the first round of the 2021 NFL draft, how do you think it stacks up? What's our what's our ranking? Start with number five. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I think I'll put, uh, I'll put I'll put Zach Wilson fifth. Okay. Because the Jets, they, the Jets, they Jets always move off quarterbacks after like two or three seasons. We saw, <laughs> that, we saw that's that. True. We, we saw that with Sam Darnold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So four, I'll go. Um, I'll go. Well, actually, I'll, I'll put Mac Jones in the top three because he's going to the Patriots because it's Bill Belichick. Yeah. Uh, and I'll put. I'll put just okay. I'll put Justin Fields four just because, I I still need to see what Nagy can do and see if he can de develop Fields. So I'll put Fields four. I'll put Mac Jones three. Uh, I'll put Trey Lance two and Trevor Lawrence just because how good he is one. Um, even though he's probably not going to be on good teams, but he'll still put up good numbers. And then I'll, I'll put Trey Lance at two just because I think when when he starts to develop and he, he gets his chance, I think he's going to be really good. It, it definitely sounds like, uh, you know, if we're talking five years down the road, Trey Lance may very well have the fewest years started out of any of these quarterbacks because, as you say, that, that situationally he's walking into a place where he may not have to start, depending on how well the, the 49ers do next year, uh, and that could really help out a young quarterback. I mean, you just look at what happened with uh, with Aaron Rodgers being able to sit behind a, uh, a veteran quarterback, and obviously he's had a lot of success going forward. Uh, Nick, man, thank you so much for uh, for coming on and helping us break down one of the most controversial picks in this year's NFL draft. Again, Trey Lance going number three to the 49ers. So uh, please, Nick, tell people where they can get the fantastic analysis like this. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, so it's really easy. It's the same social media handle for Twitter, Instagram, which is where I put most of my stuff. It's just N-C-O-U-Z. N -C -O -U -Z. So very very easy, nothing too complicated. Uh, so that's where you can find my stuff. Perfect. And of course, we will have that linked in the description as well. Nick, thanks again, man. Hopefully there will be more FCS and NDSU players that we can talk about or we can just, you know, talk about the Bears and stuff, whatever, whatever we want to do. So thanks again. Thanks. And to you out there, remember, subscribe to GA Sports. Find uh, everything to find Nick down in the description. We appreciate you. Yeah.